Hello and welcome to this video on the physiological changes and effects of obesity. Obesity is a significant health issue in Western nations, particularly the USA, Britain and Australia, and a begoning healthcare crisis in the remainder. It has become a condition treated under the guise of routine care. Obesity is defined as a body mass index over 30. This is further separated into three classes, one to three, each approximately five BMI units higher than the last. In the UK, this is approximately a quarter of the population, and it is a third of the US population. There is a growing movement to normalize and accept obesity. BMI is weight over height squared. This means a greater BMI equals a greater mass at the same height. As the human body has not evolved with a coping mechanism for these wild fluctuations as seen with bears, the long-term increase in body weight must be accompanied by a corresponding cost. In humans, this cost is in the excess growth of adipose tissue and accompanying changes in physiological function. This video will describe some of those changes. The most obvious change is the storage of excess energy in the form of adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is also an exocrine tissue which secretes hormones. These include leptin, leptin known as the afferent fat signal, adiponectin, which regulates glucose levels, tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is a cell signaling cytokine, which is involved in inflammation, interleukin 1b, which produces fever, interleukin 6, which acts as both pro-inflammatory and cytokine, monocyte chemotactic protein 1, which recruits monocytes, macrophage migration inhibitory factor, which binds to immune cells to trigger an immune response, nerve growth factor, which primarily is involved in the regulation of growth, maintenance and proliferation of certain neurons, vascular endothelial growth factor, which is produced by cells and stimulates the formation of blood vessels, plasminogen, which functions as a principal inhibitor of tissue plasminogen activator, haptoglobulin, which binds free hemoglobulin, cholesterol, which is a kind of lipid, prostanoids, which consist primarily of prostaglandins, which are inflammatory molecules, steroid hormones, which can be grouped into two classes, corticosteroids, which are generally made in the adrenals, and sex steroids, which are typically made in the gonads or placenta, and estrogen of that particularly, which is the female sex hormone. Considering all of these things, it has particular tissue actions and activities that it is responsible for and consequences in. The first being the heart and vascular system. Obesity increases the risk of cardiovascular disease by 81%. These risks are independent from any serum lipid amounts, which means even if you were to have high cholesterol, obesity increases the risk of having high cholesterol by that much and then 81%. Obesity increases the risk of stroke by 64% independent of serum cholesterol. Obesity itself carries a greater risk of atherosclerosis and varicose veins. These are all independent of any other factors. Next is the specific effect on the vascular system independent of the heart's involvement. Obese adipose tissue has fewer blood vessels per unit of volume than adipose tissue in normal individuals. This, in turn, has the effect of reducing blood flow in adipose tissue and reduces glycerol in the bloodstream, which would normally be released from adipose tissue in response to a reduction in energy consumption. A 2010 study of the brain found findings relating to obesity. It was specifically that obesity causes a brain function decline. Deteriorating white matter shows damage in the nerve sheath in obese patients this damage to the nerve sheath diminishes function of the brain, as distinct from damage in other patients and control groups, and more closely related to what would be found in Alzheimer's patients. Working our way through the most proximal organ, next would be the lungs. Large amounts of adipose tissue, such as that seen in obesity, has the effect of decreasing the lungs' total capacity for air. Lower air volume means low oxygen saturation. The larger body mass also reduces movement of the diaphragm, which means not only is there reduced capacity within the lung itself, but the actual movement of the diaphragm in order to get air moving through the lungs is reduced. This means a reduced turnover time and a reduced amount in each turnover, effectively causing an oxygen starvation state. Next is the digestive tract. 
the first of which is a hiatus hernia. This is a common side effect of obesity and causes part of the stomach to pass up through the diaphragm into the chest cavity where it is stuck. Then the liver is subject to cirrhosis, which is the same thing as if you were consuming excess alcohol and leads to a very unpleasant death. And finally, gallstones are more common in people who are significantly overweight. This is because the lipids consumed as food would either be secreted as feces or used to produce enzymes within the gallbladder. Next is energy storage and release, which is an interesting observation. Both whole and tissue specific studies have demonstrated a reduction in lipolysis for every 100 grams of adipose tissue tissue exhibits a blunted response to stimulus, like exercise and food, which means the larger you are, the higher your BMI, and the more obese you become, the harder it is to remove the fat. Next is a form of inflammation found in obesity. One of the key developments in obesity research has been the recognition that it is characterized by chronic, mild inflammation. It's increasingly being considered that inflammation particularly production of inflammatory abidokines, is important in the etiology and development of diseases such as type 2 diabetes, mild tissue hypoxia, coronary artery disease or cardiovascular disease, hypertension, prothrombotic states, liver disease, cancer, stroke and more. This would indicate that simply being obese increases the risk of not only directly impacting on your health but in the long-term development of other diseases, which further handicap the lifestyle, the quality of life, and the longevity of life experienced by people who are obese. It was just mentioned that cancer is a strong candidate for obese individuals, and obesity is considered secondary to smoking cigarettes in causing cancer. Particularly in the over 50s, obesity accounts for 14% of cancer in men and 20% of cancer in women particularly the esophagus, colon, rectum, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, and kidney in both sexes, and in men it increases the cancer rates in the stomach and prostate. In women, it increases cancer in the breasts, uterus, cervix, and ovary. Colon cancer is believed to be caused by an increase in insulin and insulin-like growth factor from those who are obese. Given the high risk of cancer in the reproductive organs of obese individuals, it would make sense that it has an effect on the sex drive. It was found that significant associations exist between low sexual desire, arousal and responsiveness in young women, and low responsiveness in older women and low serum estrogen levels relative to age when the individuals were obese. The hormone is identified as being associated with low self-reported sexual function and no free testosterone, likely due to the differing circulation levels of these steroids and the complexity of androgen metabolism. It is the most abundant sex steroid in women, circulating DHEA and its sulfate provide a large precursor to reservoirs for the intracellular production of both estrogens and androgens, which are inherently reduced in obese states. On top of the decreasing sex drive, there is a decrease in testosterone, and the increase in estrogen leads to an increase in breast tissue. Next is the interaction of obesity and the bones. The vertebral column is compressed by excess body weight. There is an increased risk of joint strain, and obesity increases the risk of fracturing the femoral neck, as most of these bones are not evolved with the idea of excess weight being carried by an individual. Next is the role of obesity in depression. Obesity can lead or be caused by depression, and it has a 55% higher chance of depression occurring when an individual is obese. Obesity leads to changes in brain chemistry and function, as described earlier, and these in turn have an effect on the ability of the body to both secrete and to turn over things like serotonin. The rise in obesity is of considerable public health importance for several reasons beyond what has been described. The first being a reduction in the lifespan of approximately 8 years and the increased risk of several major diseases. The previously mentioned type 2 diabetes is one of importance. In the case of diabetes, being obese increases the risk of the disease by tenfold or more once a BMI of 30 is reached, BMI of 30 being the definition of obesity. And the more obese 
the greater the relative risk is for an individual. Assuming that between diabetes and the other possible secondary diseases associated with obesity, the individual has not died. They may die of natural causes or a secondary cause in obesity and that there is a relative risk for obese patients compared to those who are normally weighted. The risk of death ranges from 44% in those who are mildly obese to 350% in those with a BMI above 40. This being three and a half times the chance of dying than an average person Considering the above points and circumstances, obesity is not just a personal health problem, but a ridiculous infatuation in some social groups. Much like anti-vaxxers and social justice warriors, this movement demonstrates an ignorance of the facts. If an obese individual was to live out the duration of their life, less the eight years they lose for being obese, the chances of them suffering a significant reduction in the quality of their life let alone longevity, are significantly higher. They have a much higher risk of secondary diseases like diabetes, stroke, heart attack, or more, and that the damage they do to their body over time will lead to suffering, discomfort, and pain that can be avoided. But worse than that, the effort to lose the weight will be that much more difficult because they have become obese, and as a result, this is why it is described as a dangerous and ridiculous infatuation. Thank you for watching this video. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you may have below.